Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is Paul. Hi, Yelena. There's Yelena. Hi. Hi, this is Yelena. Um, and w for our first episode with a guest, we have we have a, a, a great, a great man, a legend, uh, a titan of industry. Uh, we have Michael Keller with us to talk about learning, frustrations, training, tutorials, all that kind of good stuff the, um, in the SAP sphere. Um, and I think with that, Yelena, take us away. Let's just let's just start going. Yeah, yeah, sure. First of all, uh, I want to welcome Michael to our podcast. Uh, please say hi, Michael. Hello, greetings from Germany. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so we the, the starting point of our conversation today is a blog that has been posted on um, SAP community by uh, I don't want to butcher his name, but I hope I pronounce it semi correctly. Radoslav Chudziak. Uh, the blog title was Learning Frustrations of an SAP Developer. And I think all of us, uh, I personally and Michael, we both commented on the blog itself. And um, I think all of us can totally relate to the subject of this blog. So I'm, I'm curious to hear from both of you, um, how do you relate like personally to, to the subject that, uh, that is raised in this, in this post? And we can start with you, Paul. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you. Um, I I think so. As I reflect on kind of what this blog post, and I reflect on my sort of personal learning journey in SAP, I think the I think one of the key points here that was for me was that so when I started, my it was I had a very specific. My job was I went from a different job in the development world into an ABAP developer job, and so the company that I was with they sent me to an ABAP like training course because this was like 2010. So the online presence of that stuff was less. It was there, but it was less. So they sent me to a specific place that had like an SAP curriculum. And so I, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to be a good little student. I'm going to do all the stuff the right way. And I'll do S flight this, S flight this, blah, blah, blah. And it was a week long stuff. My brain was full by the end. And I came back to my job and it, it was, it was, it was almost like, so then I got my job. Eventually I got my sort of my first rice of like assignment. You know what I mean? Like do this report or do this. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remember thinking to myself, this, this training basically did nothing for me in terms of what I would be doing because, because <laughs> Like I was already sort of a relatively experienced developer, you know, and it it basically did nothing for me in terms of getting that job done because all of all of the stuff that was hard, like for somebody who is a programmer, you understand like swapping variables and this and assignments and things like that and subroutines already. Um, I did not understand anything about. Um, SAP processes. I didn't understand anything about um, the the sort of like the 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 divisions of RICEFs in general and what what those things were. It would have been it would have been in, inf infinitely more powerful for me to have done that training and to have done like a real like um, like literally SAP must have like a backlog of like, here are actual customer enhancements that they have done to actual things and say, okay, your job is to en enhance the sales order screen to have another field that does this and this and this when the customer clicks save or whatever. And that flow happens. And that, that would have, that would have set me off on a thousand different places. So it, it was okay. The training was okay, but I still, I still left, I, I left, not having kind of gotten the speed I needed to do what I was really going to do because there's programming and then there's what you do when you program and SAP development is, has like lots, a lot closer, like stitched togetherness to business processes than yeah. other languages and things like that. Um, and it would have been really nice to been, to been like sort of bundled up together with, like here's an here's a real world example of an enhancement to sales or screen or whatever, right? That's kind of stuff. Anyway, that was my experience of kind of onboarding and training and stuff. And I really I really reflected on that when I saw this 
this piece out there because I was I, I I feel for people who land inside SAP and they're like, oh my God, I'm in like a I'm in a different universe. You know, I'm floating in space <laughs> compared to like there's possibilities and like I don't have I don't have a map. I don't have rockets to get there from where I am now. Anyway, I I, I just babbled on a lot, but that's that's my sort of learning perspective on that stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's something we can all relate to. I think SAP yeah. development is sometimes not even as much about development itself as yeah. uh, you know fi financing your language skills, but it is as you said, it's about business process, it's about data yeah. model. Yeah. So it's it's really much yeah. more to that. So, um, M Michael, what 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 do you think? Where where did this blog touch you personally? Very personally, I agree with a lot of the points in the blog. And I want to compare it with Lego bricks. Perhaps you know this ah. little Lego bricks, yes? And when you're a child, you're building a house with it. And when yeah. you're an adult, yeah. perhaps you play with Lego bricks from time to time. Yeah. And yep. it's like working with Lego bricks. You can build a house, a small, tiny house, and then your customer comes in and, uh, and asks you to build a skyscraper because you can build a little house with Lego bricks and he said, oh, build a skyscraper and uh, do it with wood, not with stone. <laughs> yeah. not with wood. And you're sitting there and thinking, okay, um, basically, I know how to do it. I have an idea, but oh, I need an ar architect. I need uh, some experts for that, that, that. So the blog describes very a, a lot of points that I experienced in the past very well. Yeah. Think yeah. about your experience with, or your journey with the business API. When you first tried, uh, tried to post uh, a purchase order <laughs> and you were really, uh, you were solving riddles, what fields have to be filled? Yep. That you get this magical sentence, yes, <laughs> it's posted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, does does this field work? No. Yeah. Does this no. field work? Can you tell me what do you want me to do? No, you just just keep trying. Just keep trying. Keep keep entering some fields and eventually it's going to work out. Yeah, it's yeah, it's totally ridiculous. And I, I think that over time, some in some cases, actually, CP went ahead and updated Bobby documentation. But in most cases, even today, you look at them. Really, there are thankfully many posts on SAP community where you can find out what's actually needed. Yeah. But in most cases, I mean, no one bothered really to go back and update documentation for them, yeah. even using the same community posts. So yeah, so, yeah. I, and I just want to speak for myself for a second. I yeah. totally, when I saw this blog, when, when I just saw the title in my RSS feed, I was like, yeah, so like that's that's something <laughs> that, that, I, that I totally feel and um, there is just so much going on. And I feel that sometimes even developers get sort of a backlash for that. Well, what do you mean? You know, it's, it's always, you need to always learn, you need to always, and I totally agree with that. But if you do not give someone specific direction, what, what should they learn really uh, more specifically, not just, yeah, I mean, totally. I learn things every day in many areas, yeah. but for my professional life, I would really appreciate better direction. Like what would what would work for me? What would work with my preferences and with uh, systems that I'm working with? Um, but I feel that that's that's just not not there. At least at least still not yet. Even though we uh, we are a long way gone since the days when Paul started his career, when I started, when Michael started, and still we're talking about the same issues that existed many many years ago. So that that kind of takes us to another subject that uh, that I wanted to discuss. It's uh, the learning material. So this is, I feel, the case when um, too much is not really good uh, because there is so much content and it's really great compared to having no content at all, which was the case maybe 20 years ago, but it has gotten to the point where developers are overwhelmed. And um, it's not just the platforms themselves, even though there are way too, very many right now. There is. SAP community with a blog post and some Q and A. There are YouTube videos. There are open SAP courses. There is there is official official SAP training, which is probably quite far from real life at this point. 
um, there is now, there used to be SAP Learning Hub. I, I think it still exists at least for certification. And SAP just opened officially their new learning uh, websites, uh, which so far I'm not convinced is solving really any problem. So, um, so how do you feel about this proliferation of different platforms and overall kind of spreading of information and knowledge and how can developers uh, manage that better? Uh, so let me let me jump in here real quick because uh -huh. uh, like I, I like I, I don't want to so here's here I'll preface this with this is it like SAP has an enviable not a, an unenviable problem here because because to go from like total noob to like proficient or whatever it I think it's probably a more daunting task in the SAP universe than it is in, you know, Java, Python, mm -hmm. whatever, is because you have, you have a lot of places to jump to and you have a lot of like programming proficiency, being a good programmer is not even close to enough to, to, to do the right thing, so to speak in, in, in this place. Um, and so like, I, like, I totally, I mean, I, I don't what I what, while I might be saying like okay this this or that is not good enough it's not to say that like oh SAP you really stink and I, I hate you that's not the case at all it's just that they have a hard challenge because of the the complexity of the topics here are is is enormous it, it, when you consider what somebody has to go through to 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 get to where they need to go in other words think about this, like my, my first, probably my first year of doing SAP, you know, work of any kind, I was like, how is anybody an expert in this? This is, I, I was like, I'm drowning. How is, how is it even possible to be good at this? There's way too much. And every little thing is like different from the other things. Mm -hmm. And every little, like if you do some HR programming, you know what I mean? You guys know what I mean. Like you do, you go do some info type stuff and then you jump over to like SAP TM or something in the BOPF other places, right? You're like, well, how are these the same system at all? You know, <laughs> and, and it's that that's like, it's broad and deep. And so uh -huh. there are lots of things there. <laughs> but so there, but there are some places where I think that like, I, my, my humble wish is that so I, I've also done a lot of um, stuff with cloud platforms like Azure, Google Cloud, that kind of stuff. And I wish, I totally wish SAP documentation felt like Microsoft Azure documentation. Mm -hmm. Because that stuff is like that, that, that documentation has like they 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 start there's a lot of places where they start from a scenario they're saying if you want to do this and this here's the path right and it has a lot more than just click this to turn on this thing and go abc it's really from the perspective of if you're doing this with this architecture try this and like it's got it's got a lot more it's got a lot better flow a lot better understanding a lot better all that kind of stuff that's if if i if i had a way to like pour the SAP knowledge into the Azure shape, I would 100% do that. 100% in a heartbeat. That's my, that's my like rambly uh, answer to this question, Yelena, if that makes <laughs> yeah. any sense at all. No, yeah, I'm, I'm making mental notes. Uh, mm. Yeah, I want to hear from Michael and after yeah. that, I, yeah, I want to jump to some of, some, some of my mental notes. So Michael, what, what do you think about this? I like this um, idea, really give the people a motivation mm -hmm. or a good introduction and um, um, then the right actions. There are a lot of good platforms with a lot of content mm -hmm. and that's um, at the same time the big problem because um, yeah, exactly. a lot of platforms you have not enough time over the whole working day to say, oh, I'm visiting platform one, platform two, three, four. Oh, there's new content. I have to learn it now. Oh, I have to do exercises with it. And um, that's for me a big problem to uh, say, OK, uh, why should I learn that now? Where do I need it? And um, what's the motivation for that? Yep. Because you can be very good in a special part of the system or in a special area. I'm doing a lot of logistics and I have to say, 
I think a lot of people are uh, thinking about handling units. A very special part, very important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can do uh, sales and distribution, but never uh, have to do something with handling units. Yeah. But if you want to learn something about that, you need uh, real life, real world examples. And then you need the system, the processes, the idea behind. You need the way um, forward, the, the, the way backward when you have to revert something and so on. There are a lot of things to learn and that's not easy. Then I want to say the documentation about ABAP, for example, changed a little bit. Uh, one day we had this, this, this the introduction of expressions, a lot of expressions, table expressions and so on. And you yeah, can, yeah. you're now able to do a lot of things in one line of code. Love it. Love it. Yes. That's very good if you know what you want to do. And if you're a beginner, you have in one line of code, three, four statements included. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you don't, you have no clue what why it is what it is doing you cannot yeah. really target and the examples in the documentation changed a little bit and i think they are very complex now yeah. for a beginner it's hard if you're doing a long time ABAP, you would say oh great now three lines of code where i uh, needed um, in the past 20 lines great yeah yeah it can be blessing in the chorus you know yeah <laughs> to, to, to the extent this this short thing. So, yeah. So very yeah, very interesting points. I want to touch on a couple of items because I see some connections between what what we just talked about before, and and now. Um, first of all, um, SAP documentation and SAP help in particular. So just recently, I made a post on Twitter that became quite popular. Um, I made it when I was really frustrated. I spent my morning going through different Google searches that arrived at SAP documentation. But as anyone, you know, who has ever opened help.sap.com, I think we all know the feeling quite well when you're like confused Travolta yeah. most of the time there. If you know like very specifically, very exactly what you're looking for, which which is probably not the typical scenario when people go and use help, because if you know what you're looking for, then you're already halfway there. Yeah. So, but if you are kind of stumbling and trying to figure out what's the best way to do this, what's appropriate way, what's good for my version that I'm working with, then you are most of the time essentially lost. And and I wrote that you know it's 11 a.m. and I feel like I need a drink. So afterwards. <laughs> um, some people from SAP reached out to me privately, which which I'm very grateful for. I think it's great that they're trying to do that, honestly and sincerely trying to act on the feedback. But they, uh, the feedback was like, oh, you know, yeah, we read the Twitter. Well, can you give us like more specific examples? And on one side, I totally understand where they're coming from, because if you don't have more specifics, you cannot act on it. But at the same time, to me, it is just such a syst systemic issue that I yeah. honestly, I just want to reply to them. I could spend my whole day giving you examples. Um, would it change anything really? And I'm, I'm more concerned that if, if I give you examples, then you're just gonna, oh, you know, this is, oh, you're just doing search wrong. And this happened before with many feedbacks that we given to SAPs from vendors, etc. Yeah. So I think it, it is really, as Paul pointed out, when we go to SAP documentation, and that means SAP help or documentation within the systems, we really would like to see something that compares to, to Microsoft and other, you know, more like development mature companies. Yeah. And another point that another note that I made, so we talked about ABAP is not as much about language, but about business process and, and data, but this is exactly the missing element because all those learnings, they go about as flight, which everyone hates at this point. Or, or it goes about the training model, and it is like, um, oh, you know, let's let's just do direct update to this table, and we're going to show you how it works. I, it's very rarely where we even update tables directly in SAP. Yeah. Most of our time is just Michael said before it's working with Bobby's or other APIs or other SAP functionality, and just trying to wrangle it into something that customers really wanted to do. And this is, I think, the main struggling point that that none of the nothing absolutely covers right now, other than blog posts by passionate, you know, SAP community members, and and maybe 
some GitHub examples that I'm really gl glad are starting to emerge. Um, yeah. But I feel there is really no no place where someone can learn the right things in the right context right now. So yeah, that's that's yeah. my take on it. And I think um, so. Just going to very excellent points that Radoslav made in his blog post. I just I just want to read the exact quote. Uh, the bottom line is that we have to deliver real world solutions which are more complex than all this develop SAP UI5 app in five minutes or using the famous flight data model. So I think that he just hit that nail on the head right there. It's sure. it's a main challenge that there are learnings. And yes, to some extent, I can think of S flight and um, transform it into sales order or purchase order, but it I do not update like VBAC or VBAC directly, never like in my life. So that's it's completely different challenge. Uh, yeah. So so what so what do you guys think what what could possibly be helpful to um, kind of bring this together to combine learnings that's more theoretical and more just about language syntax and all of that with real world work that SAP developers do? I mean, you know, I've been jumping in, but I want to make sure I pass the ball to Michael first here. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I apologize for that, Michael. You're you are the honored guest. Please, <laughs> I invite you to speak before me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, what should I say? Um, I think you need uh, you have to pay attention um, to a very basic example. That's what we mostly have. And then you need a very hard example, a bigger one, a real life example. Um, combined with a business process and um, with some perhaps traps and pitfalls in it, um, you have to pay special attention. This is only working why, that's a good uh, sentence then. Um, the, as you said, a tutorial with uh, doing that in five minutes, that's okay. You can do that, uh, you can learn it in five minutes, but just, there are just the basics. So we need more uh, real life examples and they should not be um, divided into a technical and a business part. They should combine it because no customer is asking you uh, one day for enhance the S-Flight model or something like that. Yeah, exactly. They would say, uh, I talk with you about purchase order, a sales order, other documents. So um, you should use use that because you learn a lot about the data models. And if you are working with the data, you have an idea what algorithms are, are needed here and uh, what is the need of my customer? Why uh, do we want to, to ex extend the process? And uh, we should ha have a lot of uh, examples like that. That would be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I was one of the reasons I was kind of staring up into space here as we were talking about this a little bit is I was like, you know, because examples are the best thing in the universe, like they just are. And, and I, when I think back to all of the custom development I've done over the years for various things for customers, and, and when I was an internal employee of a company and that kind of stuff too, uh, you know, the great majority of that work was not like, how do I put this? I was not inventing a new search engine mm. when I'm doing that stuff. And so there, like, if, if that code that I wrote, either the ABAP code or the UI5 code, for example, or whatever other supporting code I may have produced, if that code was out in the universe, it would not harm that business at all. It wouldn't matter, right? And I think maybe there's, there's a gap somewhere in that, like, there's some business out there or some consulting agency out there should adopt like a, a completely open model of like all of the, all of the stuff that we do, all the code we've written is there for the universe to see. And that would capture like real examples of like really doing the real things with stuff. And it would capture the, the weird, it's, it's always about the weird quirky thing, right? There's the 90% of your code that just like lands there and does what it does. And then there's the 10% of your code that you're like, I, I can't quite make my internal table fit the format of the 
the uh, spec for this BAPI and I have to go through like crazy gyrations to make it work. Those crazy gyrations are valuable because that's where you get to see kooky examples of things you don't see every day. And if that code was just in the universe for people to go see, maybe there'd be better ways to, to learn from that stuff. So, I mean, that's just one piece of it, right? The other piece of it, I think, is that like people should just be like, I don't, I don't know how SAP itself would solve this. Maybe they could, but like the SAP community, whatever that means these days <laughs> should, should like adopt more and more and more of an open source model of some kind Yep. that says, I, you know, this was really, I don't know, th like the, the, I th like, I'm gonna get on a soapbox again for just a second. Like messed up, messed up, prof messed up things, things that you're like that you got working, but you're not particularly proud of. Those are some of the best things to learn from because chances are if you struggled with something and you came up with a solution, you're like, oh, that's ugly, but it works. Mm -hmm. Chances are that was the best anybody could have done yep. with a weird thing. And people should like somebody out there else out there in the universe or in the globe where my hand is like sort of floating of the somebody in somebody covered by my hand on this globe here is having that same problem today. Mm -hmm. And could totally benefit from you just saying, this sucks, but I did it here, here universe have it, right? If there was a way to, to just like have all of the code we write or almost all of the code we write just be in the universe available, that would, that would do a lot. That's a big dream. I know it's a big dream and probably can't actually be done, but <laughs> it, it would go a long way because, because the, because futzing around is when you figure thing when you get the things done yeah anyway. and, and and look at all those projects that already exist out there like how about git that's open source yeah uh, how about to xlsx that's i think many customers are using right now and but, but even for those uh, you know it's it's going joke in sap community that every month someone posts a blog post talking about yes. stuff that about so xlsx yeah. does that already but they, and every time it's like, well, yeah, but my client doesn't uh, want to install it. Uh, and every time I'm like, dude, I, you you can't be serious, honestly. These days, I mean, who are who is your client? Uh, I mean, North uh, Korea. Yeah. I mean, come come yeah. on now. It's just I think you just need to be no. more more kind of push push forward with that and just steer yeah. your clients in the right direction, honestly. So sometimes things have to come from like the ground up at, on, on us. Mm -hmm us like you know foot soldiers on the field of code battle yep. need to be you know yeah. knocking on the general's tent and say hey spread the love right or whatever <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah <laughs> I, th I think there is, there is a lot of feedback that can be given and um, i do not always see the tools or opportunities as days to give this type of feedback yeah. so i think that's that's definitely an issue that SAP should be able to solve. Um, because just take, for example, those same direct messages that I mentioned about SAP help. So why why is there no official channel well, where hundreds of people can tell you, hey, you know, this page sucks and it has a link that goes nowhere or requires some kind of secret login from me, or I cannot understand what this is talking about. But the best thing they have is it was was this page was this page helpful um i mean it was helpful because it exists and they, i'm making air quotes here for those of the video it's it's better than nothing but if i am completely honest uh, it, it leaves a lot to be desired because it sounds like a riddle <laughs> it tells me yeah. something but in some cases tells me too much not what i really want to know it yeah. doesn't give me examples and CDS views are, I think, a good example in this area. We had, for example, our internal mindset learning sessions that we have every month. We just gather together with developers and talk about stuff. So the most recent one, uh, we had a bit about CDS views and uh, different annotations and uh, um, different abilities. And uh, the presenter who did that was Ethan Jewett, by the way. He said, well, you can find examples in UI5 documentation. Why are CDS examples in UI5 documentation? 
when I go to ABAP documentation, there are no examples whatsoever. I'm looking, it says here is annotation syntax. Great, how, how do I use it? Where do I use it? Why do I use it? Can you tell me more about this? No, nothing. There is hundreds of different annotations. Here is a list, look at it. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, this is just absolutely ridiculous situation in yeah. my view. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big challenge. Big challenge because we have we had a lot of new technology in the last years. Yeah. And now we need to adopt it to bring it into the masses. And that's um, hard if you are working every day, a lot of your working day on old bugs, problems to keep yeah. something alive that was written 20 years ago. And uh, perhaps you cannot use any new uh, paradigms, methods or ideas to deal with this old code. And then um, you say, oh, I have to learn now about CDS, yeah. but you cannot really use it. Or you have to to deal with new um, stuff on the business technology platform. Really great and interesting, but if you, uh, yeah, if your working time is over, <laughs> you want to go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That that is a. That, I mean, I think the SAP space is especially tough from that scenario mm -hmm. because you. I honestly think you probably work on slightly to moderately older code a lot more of your time in the SAP space and a lot of other sort of enterprise IT places I think they have a little bit more freedom to to go you know exploring in the universe of new tools in their space than the SAP devs do I think SAP devs are kind of slightly more locked into where they are maybe not by choice but 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 by just by uh the nature of the platform that we use to to produce to produce their solutions we get locked into the old things and it's really to michael's point it's really hard to a find the time but b convince management to let like, give you the time to go play in the new playground because i mean i don't know let's be real sap development is also not seen as necessarily like a uh an innovation center it's mm. more seen as a keep the lights on center, right? Yeah. Cost, so cost it's center. tough. Yep. Yep. It's tough. Yeah, and it's, it's so it, it's it's kind of a vicious circle, because as you said, it's it's exactly to put what 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 Michael said before. Your day is spent half of your day is spent trying to find how the heck this puppy works and trying to make things just purely <laughs> work, just trying to satisfy client requirements, and it can be just exhausting because you yeah. don't really know what what you're supposed to do, and you're just trial and error, trying to push it in. It's like you know what's that expression square peg in the round hole oh yeah, so, yeah. So, so something along those lines so your days are essentially wasted on that and in many cases we work uh, either as consultants with the clients or as full-time uh, developers working for a specific company you are limited to what tools are available there and it could be old ecc systems there are still systems that that do not even have like 7.4 syntax i i worked in one of them just a couple of years ago or S4 HANA systems that are not latest and greatest. Um, cloud, uh, S4 HANA cloud, to be honest, I do not really know many people, maybe a couple who even work with those systems uh, outside of who works for SAP, of course. Yeah. So maybe I'm hanging out with the wrong crowd. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe I'm not <laughs> I'm kind of yeah, stuck in, stuck in the past myself, but I think the reality is still majority of customers is is running on-premise systems that that's, that's just what it is um i don't know when and how it's going to change and going back to paul's point for the manager to give you time they need to provide some justification so okay we'll let this guy or girl learn spend some time on learning but what will this learning what value will this bring to the business and this is mm -hmm. where this this connection is not always apparent and sap has been year and year doing rather poor job making those connections for the customers they definitely have gotten better compared to like 10 years ago but it's still really not not really their main goal because they are selling their products to the buyers buyers don't talk to developers and developers are just caboose of that sale train and trying to <laughs> Im implement That's whatever management bought i'm keeping that one i like that one i'm keeping that in my my expressions pocket 
I, I, what can I do? I'm just the caboose of this train. I, well, you know, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so I think for the real change to happen, that that train needs to be rearranged. I think the, yeah. the wagons on that train needs to be put <laughs> maybe in slightly slightly different mm. order. So um, yeah, we have been talking for a while. So I, I like to bring us to kind of in the place where we can maybe provide some specific suggestions or some specific advice because as as Dale Carnegie training <laughs> teaches us, you need to end with some some action items. Otherwise, it's just poof, you know, conversation. Mm -hmm. So for for myself, I want to just make suggestions to both developers and to SAP. So SAP, I think, in addition to um, helping customers to connect what you're offering with specific business values, that's definitely something that they need to do better. But another thing, they need to get better at taking feedback from everyone in their ecosystem, from the buyers, from managers, from developers of all the levels. And there are ways to do this through some kind of SAP innovation tool. None of them work very well. So it's, it's definitely something that SAP can improve with probably relatively small effort, I think. Um, and for, for developers, um, I want to say, first of all, do not despair because you, you're not alone with it. And I, I, I made, made up an expression myself and Paul and Michael, feel free to borrow it. It takes a village to raise a developer and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and Abapur in particular. So mm. do not hesitate to find your village. Yeah. And I, I'm really sad that SAP has destroyed our, not just a village, but thriving like country with, with SAP community. But there are villages out there and you, ju you just need to find them and maybe help them to thrive and to maybe build that build them up into something new and and beautiful so yes that's that's kind of my my, my message to to the world so um michael i i want to i want to go to you and uh, just what what do you think what would be your your message whoa a message <laughs> and people should follow okay hear everyone yes love michael yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hugs, hugs and kisses yeah <laughs> um i have no clear message prepared sure. and that's we're all just perfect, 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 perfect we're all fine. just we're all just playing jazz here we're all improvising exactly. so that's, that's totally yeah. fine yeah <laughs> no in a hurry i would say everyone has to to find a way that fits uh, to him or her. Um, I saw students um, having a lot of fun with the developer missions on, I don't know what SAP platform it is, but um, this missions uh, divided into steps that was mm -hmm. um, very well adopted by the students. Um, for them, it was great to say, okay, I do that, 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 and that. Mm -hmm. um, for us, when you are working uh, a little bit longer in the SAP universe, you say, okay, click, 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 click. Okay, and now I need a little bit more complex mm -hmm. example. Yeah. Um, perhaps that would be a good idea to have missions like that, um, easy missions and then more harder missions um, divided into steps and you can stop, can say, okay, I will do that later. Perhaps you get a badge. <laughs> Very wonderful if you have a badge <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> yep. Um, that would be for me, it would be a good, good idea, um, because we have to make it more attractive for everyone. The whole SAP universe must be very attractive so that we can bring new people in and that you, uh, that we can, um, help people staying in, uh, the SAP universe, because there are wonderful, our gardens full of lovely fruits and, um, so. <laughs> It's very important that people are not um, tired of, of using to technology. Yeah. They should have fun. Okay, there are some minutes every day you have no fun with technology because it's not working, but that's absolutely normal. And the other hours should be uh, normal work, fun work, having fun. That would be great. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a great, great message. And definitely we, yeah, we need to keep in mind different kinds of developers that yeah that work in sap ecosystem right now yeah awesome yeah great message michael you said yeah. you didn't have one that that was great message. Yeah. thank, thank you so much for it 
Yeah, pa Paul, what's what what do you think? Um, what's, what's your mission statement to uh, how to, how to, so to universe? I, I think what, where to one thing where to go is like because we we've touched on this a couple times in this discussion. I think is example improvement, mm -hmm. right? And I think maybe one way to maybe one way to source that would be for SAP to turn to to turn up the turn up the listening devices on its custom developer yep. platform the or the not the platform the their division right that goes out and does custom dev mm -hmm. like bringing in bringing examples from there yeah, from exactly. like what they've done yeah. and literally just streamline those into the documentation right take mm -hmm. take all of those stupid mv45 af blah blah, blah blah whatever those things are mm -hmm. that all those things do and like literally just put them in the documentation or put somewhere in documentation like say like here's here's a real world example of what a real customer needed to have an extra field on their order screen to do xyz that would be so like take just like just like forklift all of those from custom dev into documentation and the number of people who would get like amazing things that really told them, like imagine the rice ifs that you've worked on mm -hmm. that were that general shape. And you go look at an example of almost exactly what that is. Like, come on, that'd be amazing. Right. Um, yeah. So that's, that's one thing. The other thing is like to, to people out in the universe, the, the, the nerds out there who are kind of in our seats, um, raise raise your voices on social media and and whatever else and also share share your joys and share your sorrows out there and and just we need more people to say what is awesome and what sucks and i think that will help things get better too yep, yep. totally great yeah. yeah yeah and and i think github is actually a great platform for mm. sharing especially mm. your potential failures because i've yeah. seen um, let's say my share of um, blogs posted on SAP community. And there are lots of blogs even these days posting just really, if I'm honest, really crappy code. It's It wasn't even good like 20 years ago, really. But these days with everything that we know so far, it's it's really bad. But when you post it as a blog, it's like, oh, this is what I recommend doing. But definitely do not recommend that. But if you post this on GitHub, then everyone can contribute and makes make their suggestions to say, yeah. hey, you know, I see what you're doing here, and there is a better way to do that. So instead yeah. of uh, yeah. just use use proper platform for for what they're meant meant to yeah. be helpful yeah. for. So yeah, instead of posting, oh, here is you know, here is what I suggest to do. Just say, hey, this is what I've done. What do you think? So yeah, that I think that would be great. All right. So yeah, really excellent suggestions from everyone. So. Um, I think we're, yeah, we're at a great point and uh, it was really great conversation that um, I personally have enjoyed and I hope yeah, that, uh, yeah, Paul and most Absolutely. importantly, Michael, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hope you guys yeah. have fun <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope that our, that our listeners and uh, potential viewers also enjoyed this conversation and um, I'm really looking forward to more conversations between, yeah, um, between us in future. Yeah, Michael, is there anything we can plug for you on this, like Twitter oh, yeah. handles or websites or anything like that? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then you're, you're, we you're won't. Your consulting business. You are. Anything. <laughs> you are unplugged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway, let me let me just say I really appreciate your time, Michael. Thank you so much. Uh, and I think it's gonna gonna make a big help out in the universe to, to just to keep having these conversations. So I I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. It was yeah. enough for me. Absolutely enough for me. Excellent. All right. So, so thank you, everyone. That was our, our podcast um, on uh, learning challenges of SAP developers. Um, thank you, everyone. And I hope to hear and see you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>